So news, the United Auto Workers has five. Why is bro always yapping about nonsense but has no actual policy ideas? I mean, how dare you, dude? He came up with the no tax on tips. That was his. And Kamala Harris stole that from him, which is really fucked up. <laughs> really fucked up. Kamala stole that from him. How dare you? That was a big one, okay? Uh... Filed federal labor charges against both Donald Trump and Elon Musk. The charges are tied to particular comments made during Trump's ex interview with Elon Musk yesterday. I mean, I look at what you do. You walk in and you just say, you want to quit? <laughs> they go on strike. They, I won't mention the name of the company, but they go on strike and you say, that's okay, you're all gone. You're all gone. So every one of you is gone. A senior advisor for the Trump campaign released a statement saying, in part, quote, this frivolous lawsuit is a shameless political stunt intended to erode President Trump's overwhelming support among America's workers. Elon Musk is not. Bro, you can't. What do you mean? What do you mean overwhelming support among America's workers? Dog, you literally were talking to a billionaire union buster laughing about how funny it is to violate the fucking law and like fire workers for striking. Even the mere mention of that is a violation of the law. Okay, like you cannot advocate to fire striking workers. It is illegal. Okay, you can't fire striking workers. That is also illegal, but you can't even fucking advocate for it. And you did that in front of millions of people. Like millions of fucking people. <coughs> Not yet responded. Well, let's talk to Sean Fain, the president of the United Auto Workers Union. Sean, good to have you here on America Decides. We've, we've covered you a lot over the past year. Hey, Bob, thanks for having us. So tell me about the decision to do this. You're, you're either watching or informed about. Chairman Fain, Chairman Fain, stand up and salute. Chairman Fain, I will go into battle for you, sir. Chairman Fain, give me my orders. my goat out the comments made by musk and trump and you decide to file these federal labor charges what was behind the decision to do it so quickly look because this is the problem <clears throat> yeah once again once again uh just like i snitched on just like i snitched on aiden ross with the fec situation we're snitching on him again i i snitched on trump as well when he did that illegal thing and and there it is, you know, classic problem in America right now. The rich keep getting richer at the expense of the working class and people like Donald Trump and Elon Musk. They, they sneer at labor law, but they don't care about labor law because they don't care about working class people. Uh, you know, they believe in buying off the system and, and buying off politicians and being able to have their way with people. And, you know, look, it's it, employers need to be held accountable in this country when they break the law. It is a federal right of workers to go on strike, and they cannot be fired for that. But, you know, people like Donald Trump and Elon Musk, they laugh about firing people because they can care less about people and about their jobs and what they do to their careers. All they care about is, is the billionaire, billionaire buddies and, and taking more wealth. And, and so this is a which side are you on election? And that's why working class people will vote for Kamala Harris and Tim Walls, because they're one of us. And Donald Trump and Elon Musk represent everything that this nation stands against. Sean, give me your assessment, the, the, the real sense of things on the ground among workers, especially in the UAW. They had a Democratic candidate who was walking the picket lines with them, and they have an ally in Vice President Harris. But Joe Biden, as president, has this 50-plus years in public life, building the relationships with labor. How has the adjustment been among UAW members to the Harris campaign I know she has been with you on stage. Uh, Walls is the governor. Walls is speaking to labor people today in California. But what's the real sense you have about how labor is adjusting to this new dynamic and new candidate atop the ticket? I think the adjustment's amazing. Uh, look, our people, uh, they're looking forward to this. There's so much energy around this campaign. And, and the biggest reason why I think that is, is because when people look at Kamala Harris, when they look at Tim Walls, they see themselves. You know, they see people that started out at McDonald's. They see a person that's been a teacher. 
as the teaching profession has been decimated over the last few decades by the Republican Party. And so, you know, when you look at people and you see yourself, you know, they're relatable. So working class people, especially the, the Democrats played a role in that, too. OK. The Democrats played a role in decimating the teachers unions as well with the fucking charter school nonsense. OK, since the 90s, you know, we'll let it we'll let this one slide. Chairman Fain, that's my goat. Why do you never talk about Biden taking down the railroad strike? I do. You're just fucking stupid. I have covered it extensively. You're just a fucking idiot who doesn't know anything about anything. Okay? It's so stupid. You get your news from TikTok. Okay? I get my news and disseminate news on motherfucking... Oh, you said they. I thought you meant me. Even then, it doesn't matter. Even then, it doesn't matter. Even then, it doesn't matter. Charter schools can be a good thing. No, it can't. Stop. They did. They did. Mainstream media also talked about it as well. The major problem here is what came after Biden broke the strikes. Okay? Biden broke the strikes. Then what did he do? He went with Labor Sec I mean, uh, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg, and, uh, and also, I apologize for misreading what you said. Labor, uh, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg and Biden went back to the actual fucking railroad companies and turned around and got them to meet the demands of the actual labor unions. So, this is the part of the equation that rarely ever gets coverage in the media. This is what people don't know, okay? This is what people are not familiar with. Like, no, I, I, I am always going to hold the Biden administration to account, okay? And there is plenty that you can talk about. On the issue of labor, I think that Biden, and I've said this before, on the issue of labor, Biden is one of the most pro-labor presidents, uh, perhaps of all time, but certainly in recent history, okay? That's just true. That doesn't change the reality that he's also a genocidaire and has destroyed that. Oh, I didn't hear about that. I was confused on why they were saying he was so pro-union when he did that. Yes, because he went... No, I said perhaps of all time because it's a very low bar with only like FDR and a couple other presidents clearing that bar. Biden also is the only fucking president that has walked a picket line. Only sitting president. Especially in UAW are extremely excited about this campaign. We're ready to go to work to ensure they get elected because we know, you know, looking at Donald Trump, people like him, you know, no one relates to that. I mean, the man was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. Daddy gave him millions to start out, and Daddy bailed him out of you know service to this country, and, and that's been his story in life. Uh, he serves no one but himself. Meanwhile, Kamala Harris, Tim Walls, they've spent their lives serving others, and, and that's what this election is about, is working-class people taking their lives back. Sean, last time we caught up, we were in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and you've been working to unionize uh, different automobile plants in Tennessee and elsewhere. And you look at the political map, a lot of the political map and some of these emerging battlegrounds in the Deep South and the South uh, overlap with your targets as a labor leader. Is the South a changing place politically? Is labor getting more of a foothold, not just in terms of union efforts, but in terms of political strength? I, look, I think, look, this all comes down. You go back to our big three campaign. Um, you know, 75% of Americans, union or not, supported us in that fight because the issues we're talking about, having a living wage, not a minimum wage, a living wage where you can have one job and make a decent living, you know, having adequate health care, having uh, retirement security, and, and getting your time back, not having to work seven days a week, 12 hours a day, or not having to work two or three jobs just to scrape to get by paycheck to paycheck. That's what matters to American people, whether they live in the South, the North, or East, or West, or wherever they live. And that's why 75% of Americans supported us. And that's why workers are understanding now the reason why they need to organize. And I believe that's what this election's about. When you look at these two candidates, you can't see a more stark contrast. You have working class people on one side with Kamala Harris and Governor Tim Walz, 
and you have billionaires and people that represent the billionaire interest on the other side and Donald Trump and J.D. Vance. And so it's a very clear picture for us. And I believe you're going to continue to see a shift over time with where people stand in this country. You mentioned billionaires a lot in your public remarks here in our conversation as well. But there is a push by the Trump campaign to connect with labor, especially on the issue of immigration, uh, talking about the border, talk, framing that as an economic argument for workers across the country as a reason to go with Republicans. And Republicans hosted the Teamsters at the Republican National Convention. When you are encountering a UAW member who says, and I've, I've met some of them covering the UAW, who says, look, I'm a traditional Democratic voter, but I like what Trump's saying on immigration. That's pushing my vote toward him. What do you say? Well, I say, first off, Donald Trump is all talk, and that's all he's ever been. He's no action. Uh, you look at uh, workers when Donald Trump was president in the UAW, they were left behind. Plants were closing in this country. Uh, workers at Lordstown in Ohio, their plant closed under Donald Trump. He didn't. He told those workers, don't sell your houses. And then he did nothing to help save that situation. Those workers were sent all over the country to work at other plants. And under Kamala Harris, under Joe Biden, those workers are now returning back to Lordstown because they put a battery plant in that town. So, you know, look, uh, when Trump and them talk about immigration, all the... Dude, why do so many people keep saying kick video, kick video, kick video in this chat? Like, I said I would get to it if I have time. Obviously, like, you know, it's not... Like, I don't know why the fuck people are so adamant about it. Like, yeah, dude, I will get to it when I have time. Like, what the fuck? Some other shit is happening in the world right now. And as a fucking political commentator, my job is to cover that shit. Okay. I, I know more pedophiles have been uncovered uh, on on kick. I know, not shocking revelation. You know, that's how the billionaire class makes their living. They want to keep working class people divided. It's divide and conquer. It's the oldest trick in the book. They want to point a finger at the frustration for working class people in this country and why your life sucks right now. And the reason your life sucks is they want you to blame it on a black person, an LGBTQ plus person, or they want you to blame, blame it on some destitute and desperate person trying to find a better life by crossing the border. And it's a shame, but that's what these people are. They play divide and conquer and hoping that that works. But, you know, they think we're stupid. They think working class people are stupid and we're not. We know this game. We know better than that. And at the end of the day, you know, it's what we what we bring home every day, why we work. We work to have a decent standard of living and a decent quality of life. And again, I go back to that. That's what this is all about. And Donald Trump doesn't care at all about that. All he cares about is extracting more wealth for him and his billionaire buddies while working class people continue to get left behind. Sean, final thing here. When I spoke to President Biden last week, he said he's going to work with Governor Shapiro and go spend a lot of time in Pennsylvania. That's a battleground. We know Union members are important there for a Democrat to win Pennsylvania. So put Pennsylvania to the side. Where else do you believe President Biden should be utilized to make sure labor support is stoked in the coming weeks? Um, I, look, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, battleground states we're looking at, you know, Michigan, you know, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, uh, you know, Arizona, Georgia. I mean, but, you know, ultimately, it's just this. I mean, I believe it's just talking about the successes of, of the Biden-Harris administration and what they've done to bring jobs to America, something Donald Trump didn't do. Um, you know, Donald Trump likes to talk about the auto industry and, and how he's going to save it. First off, he had an opportunity to save it, and he didn't do a damn thing. So, you know, I just believe that we got to speak truth to what's happened and, you know, talk about inflation, the real cause of inflation. How much was this guy paid? What do you mean, brother? He was paid by fucking Joe Biden showing up to a goddamn UAW picket in the midst of one of the most important labor organizing events of all in recent American history. Yeah, that's how he was fucking paid.